Good morning, everybody. If I can have your attention, please. And if uh, you find yourself in the sun, I encourage you just to to follow the uh, to follow the, the shade. But we gather this morning to give thanks to God for the life of Susan Scott, to celebrate her life and to honor her. We gather to express our trust in Him who promises to be our strength and joy in the midst of death. And we gather to be reminded once again that the sting and victory of death over life vanished in the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Savior. Hear these words of our Lord's love and assurance. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I die, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. For none of us has life in himself, and none becomes his own master when he dies. For if we have life, we are alive in the Lord, and if we die, we die in the Lord. So then, that whether we live or die, we are the Lord's possession. Will you bow your hearts and heads with me in prayer? Lord, God of life, conqueror of death, our help in every time of trouble. Lord, it is wonderful uh, to gather here this morning, even in, even in the warmth of, a, of, a, of an August day, to celebrate and to remember Susan, Lord, to celebrate and remember you. And I just ask, Lord, that as we spend this time together, Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit, draw us near to yourself, Lord, near to one another. In your wonderful, precious name, we ask it. Amen. I'd like to share a psalm. If the wind will cooperate. Just hold, just, hold, just hold that for me. Yeah. No jokes. <laughs> The 121st Psalm. I lift my eyes up to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. And the words uh, of our Lord on the night he was betrayed. John 14, verses 1 through 7. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would, know, you would have known my Father also. 
from now on you do know him and have seen him. Praise be the Lord. Okay, our last uh, friends that, to share some awesome uh, thoughts, and she got a few uh, emails. And before I share them, Debbie's going to come and share. Debbie? Debbie, I'm Sue's um, niece. Hey, Debbie, why don't you uh, remove your mask while you're speaking? Oh. There you go. So my name is Debbie and I'm Sue's niece. I'm, everybody's grown up so much, it's hard to recognize the half of you guys. But um, I wrote this, I'm going to try to read it. But if I get stuck, will you help me? I will. Thank you. Oh, my heart would be stuck. I remember when my sister and I were about seven years old and Sue would come and pick us up in her old Mustang and we would go to Disneyland with her friend Stenna. I would be in the back seat so excited as I sat forward to ask her if we were getting close. She would say, you're pulling my hair. Sue had very long pretty hair and I remember I pulled it a lot and was always sorry and she would just shake it off as it never happened. We lived by the beach and Sue would come over with Stena or Johnny and take us to the beach and I learned how to build sand castles and dig for sand crabs. Sue was like a grown up playmate for me. I loved it when she came over because I knew we were off for a day of fun. We had a great relationship. Sue went to work at Rantec as homework. We often ate French toast for dinner, drowning it in butter and then lightly putting powdered sugar on it just so the powdered sugar turned yellow. Sue loved to eat breakfast for dinner, but sometimes she would say, let's make a barbecue steak tonight with a baked potato. So off to the store we went to buy a steak. It had to be a thick steak. Sue liked a very thick, juicy steak. When we got home, we put it on the grill it was taking a long time to cook, and come to find out, we had bought a small roast. <laughs> it was pretty late that night by the time we ate, but we were happy and laughing all the time. I had a job, but I wanted to buy something, and I didn't have enough money. Sue was very mindful of her finances, and the next morning she sat down she sat me down and asked me if I wanted to start building credit. She explained to me how a credit card how a credit card works. And she got me a card on her account with my name. Sue did things that made me feel very special. When the bill came in, she explained that I should pay it off to avoid interest. I didn't listen very well. Sometimes I charged more than I had told her about, and she said, You can't charge it. Treat the card like cash. Instead of paying with cash, use the card. And when I get home, put the money in an envelope, and when the bill comes, I will have the money and not have to work double shifts to pay for things. She taught me that it was important to build credit, and if I don't have the money to them one day, I won't be able to pay the bill off, and it's like, a different time I had lived with Sue and I was smoking in bed. Oh yeah. And I caught a blanket on fire. Mad, but was still kind to me the very next day. Sue was the most gentle person that I knew. She didn't have an evil I'll get you back spirit. Her spirit was gentle like the breeze. Susan and I did many things together. We played canasta with grandma and a few neighbors. We went to Yosemite which was her favorite place. Sue loved going to Cabo San Lucas with us. She truly enjoyed the restaurants and the things the property had to offer. Last year, we went to Cabo. Oh, she agreed to a massage. She's so funny. She said to me that she didn't think she wanted one. She had never had one, and she didn't think she wanted someone's hands on her. 
I tried to get her to agree to a hot stone massage, but she agreed to a regular one. After it was over, I asked her if she liked it, and she said, yeah, it was okay. That told me that she hadn't really missed out on anything in her life. She knew what she liked. and did it all the days of her life. Her, lo her love for the babies was where she felt safe and comfortable. When she was taking care of children, her heart was able to lead. And I know that that was where she was the happiest. When she held the babies, her heart was full. And I knew that, I knew that by the way her body was and the look in her eyes. My grandma always told me, the eyes are the looking glass into the soul. And I believe that that is true. When I looked into her beautiful blue eyes, I saw her soul, pure and full of love and hope. She let her heart lead her in most things and not her head. Thank you, God, for giving her to me for the time I got with her. Please hold her gently in your arms and let her love you as she loved all of us. Thank you. This comes from Maryland Tennis. Sue and I have been friends for 32 years now. Our sons, Greg and Scotty, brought us together when they were kids and would swim in the pool. We shared many meals together from home cooked to Denny's on, on random afternoons. We were always going after that. We really bonded over uh, motorhome campouts to bring our camp grandkids together, each other's company, and even weathered the wild dust storms together at Thornhill Boom. As the years progressed, I taught her Pinochle, and we played Sit and See at Tag and Wagons, and this bonded us closer. Our experiences are unforgettable. Thank you, Marilyn. This from Marge Skolarski. Yes, okay. Marge Skolarski. Sue was a dear, dear friend. We met in 1986 in the Lockheed Scamper Group. Her mother and father were members also. We are a caring group of campers who enjoy each other's company. Slowly our friendship developed and she shared with me her concerns about Scotty, her son, and Taylor, her grandson. We shared many joys and frustrations. She had a loving heart that wanted to help everyone. Our closeness was beyond camping. We shared a love of card playing, and for over 25 years, we met every month to play a game called Sit and See. Then this game became so enjoyable, we played at most camp campouts, as well as meeting every Friday night. We would have dinner together with Marilyn Tennis and another couple at our house. First we met for dinner and then came to our house where we teased, laughed, and enjoyed each other's company. Often we would go to the Santa Clarita Elks for dinner and friendship with other people that belong to the scampers. Friends like Skip and Karen Hinky, Bill and Nadine Ellers. Nadine was a member of our month sit and see group. As you see, we love that card game and play it whenever possible. She also became my adopted quote sister-in-law. One morning as we were up at the Elks, he had an exceptional bad one. So severe, a 9-11 call was made, and they took him to Henry Mayo Emergency. Sue did not let me drive as I was exceptionally upset. She drove after the ambulance, and when we arrived there, we had to stay in the waiting room. After a while, I asked to see him, and Sue was right next to me. I was told, family only. I replied without a beat. She's my husband's sister, and we both got to go in. That is how she became my, quote, sister-in-law. Her 60th birthday was a surprise at my home in Latuna Canyon. I don't think it would have been a surprise because there were three women involved. Can you imagine the phone calls we had to keep to have to keep it a secret and arrange everything? We were all in the driveway when she pulled up, and her face was so confused. People from everywhere came. We must have had 50 people from all our friends. She enjoyed the company of Marils and Marilyn Hagen and the grandson Robert. 
Many times we would visit the group and we often spent 4th of July with them and had fireworks in the backyard. Sue's 70th birthday was celebrated in Alaska. I was included in the family trip. I felt honored and enjoyed the companionship the family had. As an only child, I looked to her as my sister. I will miss her visits to my home at, v at Villa Scalabrini. After 34 years, we had many memories. As I was going through my photo albums, I sent Sue all the ones I knew she would enjoy. I also enjoyed being included in Cindy and Jim's celebration, Sue's cousin, Cindy's grandmother, Barbara, and I. Excuse me. Cindy's grandmother, Barbara, was a member of our sit and see group, and I always referred to her as Auntie Barbara. Oh, Sue, you are close and caring for each other, and I miss you. Please, Lord, take good care of her, as she is a special and caring person. I loved her so much. And Marge ends. She was also my adopted sister-in-law. Those who've, who've shared so much with us and and then have, you know, have passed on. This is going to be. I'm hoping this is captured on the on the computer and shared on on YouTube. I'm just wondering if there might be one or two who would be willing to come and and share their remembrances of Sue. Yeah, Kevin, be careful of the of the terrain. Just uh, say say your name and, and go ahead and share. See if I can get through this. <laughs> My name is Gigi Lockman. Where do I start with Sue? Um, she was my neighbor. I moved in. My husband and I actually it was before we got married. We moved into this little house on Rathburn in Northridge, and I used to see Marilyn out in front and and Sue sitting out in their chairs, and all the kids running around the front. And I didn't have any kids. I had one child at that time, my son Cody. And um, how I met Sue is, I'll never forget this one. Cody was being typical Cody and giving me a run for my money. And I'm yelling at him. And she comes across the street and she says, Sounds like you can use some help. <laughs> and from that point forward, she was my, my go to. She was, um, she was there for, in fact, brought me to the hospital, I think, for every single one of my children's births. It was Sue carrying along the kids, one by one, and me looking at her, oops, they're taking me early. She had it all covered. I never had to worry about anything when it came to my kids, um, all my kids. We sat and we talked when we first met. It turned out she wasn't such a stranger. I had known her son, James. We had gone to junior high together, <laughs> high school. <laughs> and um, it just seemed like it was meant to be. She quickly became a part of my family, not just my family, my entire family. For everyone she took care of my children she took care of my niece she was just an amazing always count on sue uh, just this last week my uh, husband and i and my family kids we took a trip and i think we got past bakersfield and i looked up and i saw the mountains and i thought to myself this is the first time we've made this trip in 20 years without Sue in the car. And I wasn't the only one who felt that. My girls, my son, my husband, we all looked at each other and we knew without even saying it. This was a trip. It was a special trip. Because even though she wasn't with us physically, we knew she was there with us. When the sun shined down on the lake, the little jokes we made about the bugs biting me, we knew she was there with us. And I know she's not here. It's in my family and I'm sure every. So I just want to say that I'm thankful for having her in my life. And as Raven put it, 
she's a butterfly and she's flying high. We love you. Thank you. Heather is going to come share some uh, thoughts from James, Sue's son. Hi, for those of the those of you that don't know me, I'm James's girlfriend. Um, James wants to thank you all for coming today to celebrate his mom's life. What can I say to let her know that she is the best there is? And I hope I inherited some of her wisdom and strength. Mom, there are no words to describe my love for you and how much you mean to me. My lasting memories of my mom will forever stay in my heart. She was a hardworking, passionate figure of strength who never wavered in her support of love for her family, who gave all she had and never complained, even when times were tough. She is the most amazing woman I know. I am truly blessed to have had her as my mom. Growing up, I had my moments of being a bit tough, to, difficult to raise alone, but I will never forget how hard she worked and all, the, and all she had sacrificed just to make sure I never went without. More than anything, she loved the joy that came from helping others. So many lives she, so many lives she has touched, even though she has passed on, she will forever remain in our hearts. What we are left with today are the loving memories she has blessed us all with. She taught love with no conditions, generosity with no limits, kindness with nothing held back. To know her was to love her and be loved by her. Our hearts hurt, but hurt is only equitable to how much we loved and were loved. There is so much in life we take for granted and only realize the severity of the loss when they are gone. Our health, our time, and the unconditional love of our mothers. I want to say I love you to those who mean who matter to me. We never know what tomorrow will bring. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for loving me and raising me into the man I am today and always being there for me no matter what. As we lay you to rest today, I know this is not a goodbye. So until the time when time comes when I see you again, please continue to watch over me and the family know that you live in our hearts and are forever our angel. I love you with all my heart, James. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, James. These are thoughts from Carol, Sue's sister, uh, my sister and friend. Carol writes, Susan is my only sibling. She is my little sister. By that I mean, that's what I always call her. Susan has a clear understanding of being a sister, a mother, a grandmother, and a great-grandmother. Love, caring, being there for you always. When we were young and in school, we were not the best of friends. We had a three-year age difference uh, and different interests. When I got married and started a family, Susan was always there to help with babysitting, taking the children on afternoon outings and just enjoying When Susan had her own family and her son was in her life, she was a single mom for most of the upbringing of her son. She and Scotty, that's the nickname for James, were always doing things together during his childhood. On vacation with her parents, including the Hawaiian cruises, and the list goes on. Susan was so excited when she found out she would be a grandmother. Shopping was on in a big way. Susan, with her big heart and love of babies, raised two children, her son James and her grandson Taylor, for a good part of Taylor's childhood. During this time of parenting, she made many friends from work in the neighborhood. She would call, visit, and have, and have lunch with them often. Susan was a great friend. Susan also did a lot of child care for neighbors for many years. She was a modern day nanny. There are a couple families she kept in contact with and, and has attended all the children's graduations from elementary through high school. When Susan and I had finished having families and we had empty nests, we found a great friendship with each other. I think she initiated that too. Both our parents had left this earth and it was the two of us left to care for each other. We vacationed together, we went on a houseboat with friends for a week at Lake Shasta, a week at Lake Mead, a trip to Washington State, and Friday Bay, Vegas for a few days. Solano Beach a few times, Cabo. Birthdays were big for Susan. We enjoyed traveling together. Our aunt living in Redlands. She formed a closer relationship with the cousins. 
Most people saw Susan as content and positive with her life. Although she had some very hard times in her later life, but always tried to make the best of the situation and go forward. Susan would call and ask, how's it going in our lives? If I needed help, she was always, um, she would always change her calendar and come to be with me. Often she would come over and stay for a week and so, and we would cook together and take a ride to Solvang or Santa Barbara. We would go to the movies, a little shopping, or just hang out together. Susan was the friend everyone wants. Susan, I miss you. The car wins it. I love you, Susan. From the sounds of it, uh, everybody loves Susan. Because Susan seemed to uh, love everybody. In John chapter 11, Jesus says, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And, and that's a powerful reality that Jesus reveals there, that he is the resurrection and the life. The resurrection. We can know that in Christ, uh, life never ends. And, and the church has borne testimony for, for 2,000 years of, of the reality of this, of this quality of, ex of existence that uh, that death cannot hold. When, Je when Jesus rose from the dead on the third day after uh, he, he was cru crucified, he proved to the world that truly he is the resurrection and the life, the God of all creation, which speaks to the second reality, who's, who offers life to everyone. And then I heard you guys share about Susan talking to Sandy, right, Sandy? Nanny, right? Nanny to your kids from putting take her out of the family. Doing, doing all the stuff. Because Susan loved. Through that reality, Susan experienced the, uh, the fullness of life and shared the fullness of life. She's pointing right to the heart of Jesus. Certainly, certainly, the resurrection, the absolute confidence that there is something beyond the grave. No doubt about it in my mind. I've heard too many stories. The scriptures are way too clear. There's a reality beyond the grave. And what that reality looks like is what Susan has shared with many of you.